Good afternoon to all the listeners. Today we are happy to hold the webinar, The Significance of Universal Health Coverage in Today's World from SDG's Viewpoint and the Role of the United Nations, together with the UN Information Center Tokyo, Ministry of Foreign Affairs Japan, with the support of JBF. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ichikawa, the director of JIIA. We are going to use Zoom and Japan, Japanese and English simultaneous interpretation is being offered. There are so many viewers and listeners today. If any one of them wants to ask questions, please use the chat Q&A chat function, not the voice function. At the opening, I would like to call upon the president of JIIA, Ken Ichiro Sasae, to give us the opening remark. Good afternoon, everyone. As Japan celebrates the 60th anniversary of Japan's universal national health insurance system this year, it gives us at the JIIA, a great pleasure to co-host with United Nations Information Center Tokyo, Minister of Foreign Affairs Japan, with the support of JBF. This webinar, The Significance of the Universal Health Coverage in Today's World from an SDG Viewpoint and the Role of the United Nations. I would like to thank all the people who worked hard for the preparation of this webinar. Japan, based on its own experience and seeking to address the issue of global health system strengthening, led the initiative to incorporate UHC into the SDGs through the United Nations. At the forefront of assistance, not only Japan but UN agencies are utilizing UHC as a leverage in the assistance. The process through which UHC became an agenda item for the entire international community offers an excellent example of the synergy produced when the UN functions and Japan's efforts are combined. Today, all the countries of the world are facing the coronavirus pandemic its difficulties. People's health is being threatened, especially the vulnerable population is faced with the serious health disparities. Against this backdrop, renewed attention is being given to the significance of UHC and the idea of human security. In today's seminar, we will discuss the relevance of UHC from the viewpoints of SDGs, the role of the United Nations, and Japan's health diplomacy. It uh, gives us great honor to listen to the keynote speech by Honorable Keizo Takemi, who have worked long and hard for this issue. And uh, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Mohammed's message shows how the United Nations places importance on the UHC and uh, the role of Japan. Japanese government, business communities, international organizations, uh, practitioners of the aid and the developing countries are represented in today's panel. I do hope that the lively discussion will take place to show us the useful views on UHC and the role of the United Nations and Japan, and I do hope to see a common viewpoint to be given to us. Thank you very much. This concludes my opening remark. Thank you. On the occasion of this webinar from the United Nations, we have a pleasure and honor of having the video message from Deputy Secretary General Ms. Amina Mohammed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address you today on the important issue of universal health coverage as it relates to the Sustainable Development Goals. I thank our co-hosts for organizing this event. 
The global COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the vital role of universal health coverage in the most tragic way possible. It has reminded us of the urgency of national investment in both universal health coverage and health security. It has also demonstrated our interconnectedness and the need to strengthen multilateral cooperation on health and across the board. Universal health coverage, UHC, means that all people have access without financial hardship to the full range of quality health services across all the phases of their life to ensure their health and well-being. It is an essential building block for the world we want by 2030, as set out in our universally agreed agenda for sustainable development. But even before the COVID-19 pandemic, we were not on track to deliver on the SDGs by 2030. Disruption to health services has now compounded the challenge, reversing hard-won progress on health care, including routine vaccinations, reproductive services, maternal and child health care, and mental health services. Universal health coverage and health security are two sides of the same coin. Both are essential to building resilient health systems that can prevent and respond quickly to future threats, including pandemics. World leaders reinforced their commitment to UHC with a political declaration at the United Nations General Assembly in 2019 that calls for an additional 1 billion people to have access to quality essential health services by 2023. This must be our focus as we strive to get back on track. Today's event and Japan's important global advocacy can help accelerate progress towards universal health coverage and all the sustainable development goals. Thank you, and I wish you all success. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General. But there's this one person who have worked long and hard for the UHC. Mr. Keizo Takemi is the WHO Goodwill Ambassador for UHC. He will discuss uh, Japan's uh, health diplomacy and UHC. Please. My name is Keizo Takemi. I'm the member of the House of Customers from 1990s. I have been involved in the health uh, diplomacy. I have been blessed with that opportunity. Based on my experience, I would like to discuss the health diplomacy for Japan. What does it mean to Japan? In the universal health coverage, UHC, what kind of process did it take to become the international challenge for international community to be incorporated in the SDG goal three? And through the pandemic, how will the health diplomacy evolve going forward? Those are the things I would like to discuss today. First, the motivation of uh, health diplomacy in Japan. What kind of viewpoints was taken in formulating the health diplomacy in Japan? Next, please. First, in 1990s, since 1990s, for the healthcare uh, sectors, uh, the uh, uh, interest in the international community rose as a result that in, two, in the year 2000 at the Millennium Summit, MDGs were adopted. There were eight uh, goals, number four and five and six. These three goals are related to health. For example, uh, reduction of the infant mortality and the health of the uh, um, expectant mothers and the eradication of the infectious diseases like AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. And from this uh, perspective, uh, what used to be called international health has become global health. It is an uh, internationally uh, shared common goal transcending borders. In 1990s was the time which saw that, and Japan was no exception to that uh, trend. Next, please. In 1990s, for uh, Japan, there was a tipping point, a turning point for Japan in the pacifism after the war in Japan. Uh, the uh, Based on the experience of the war, there was this pacifism. 
and those generations started to uh, uh, go away, and then the momentum started to decline. And in this 1990s, there's this future-oriented pacifism idea. How can we rebuild that pacifism? There's a discussion emerging, and UNDP advocated the human security. That perspective matched with the uh, 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 pacifism, future-oriented pacifism. At the Millennium Summit, Japan tried uh, made the recommendation to uh, summarize the idea of the human securities and uh, Ms. Ogata and Mr. Amaltia Sen, Ms. Amaltia Sen co-chaired uh, the Committee of Human Security, for example, the freedom from the fear and uh, the dignity, the protection of build, uh, dignity and the freedom from deficiency were the focal points. And the objective of the human security is that how can anybody lead a useful life, as many people as possible? And then how can we uh, offer more options to each and every one? For that uh, purpose, what kind of assistance is needed? And uh, in expanding the options, if health is undermined, all the other economic, social, e educational options will be undermined as well. So health is related to all the options. So health is the uh, core, at the core of the human uh, security. So that's the second uh, uh, motivation. Third, next slide, please. At the same time, but this is the internationally shared uh, challenge within Japan for this uh, challenge. Because there has been an effective uh, solution. And Japan has accumulated such experiences for such solution. Fortunately, Japan, in terms of the average life expectancy, as you can see after the war in the graph, for both male and female from 1970s, the uh, average life expectancy started to rise uh, and uh, become the world number one of the world. Next, please. In the Washington University's Institutes for Health Metrics and Evaluation, measures uh, a healthy life expectancy recently for both men and female. Japan is uh, uh, at the top, by far, at the top of the world in terms of the healthy life expectancy. Next, please. And as has been discussed, in 1961, uh, Japan established uh, the uh, national health insurance system that means that uh, universal health coverage for Japan was established as well. So the healthcare system in Japan started at an early age and uh, helped grow the Japanese economy after the war. And these are not only for improvement of health alone, for example, in social security, more than 70% of the redistributed income is borne by the uh, national health insurance system. It's not only health, but it expanded the middle income uh, segments and uh, contributed to the recovery um, uh, of society and economy. And these uh, domestic experiences can be a uh, cornerstone for uh, the uh, uh, expansion of the uh, health system in the world. How was this developed in the diplomacy? In G8 summit, G7 summit, and G20 summit meetings, those are the main fora that Japan led the way for uh, the uh, health diplomacy. When Japan was the chair, Japan utilized the opportunities and had the strategic approach to it. And here, all those summit, summits in Okinawa, in case of Okinawa Summit in 2000, uh, there's this uh, infectious disease uh, initiative and global fund was established. In G8 Toyako Summit, there's a uh, health system strengthening, uh, which was advocated of Japan. And then in combination with the disease-based approach, a wide range of policy making was made possible. 
Next, please. So one of the turning point, major turning point for the health diplomacy was the G8 Hokkaido Toyako Summit in 2008. Yeah. In addition to the disease-based approach, health system strengthening was advocated as important, and especially the health workforce and health information and health financing. These three had the focus for HSS. And then that uh, was evaluated highly by the international community. And this is one of the uh, uh, big results, uh, outcomes by Japan's health diplomacy. Now, HSS, what is the policy goal for HSS? The health system strengthening its objective is should be universal health coverage, and UHC should be incorporated in the SDG to be established. That's how Japan thought, and uh, Prime Minister Abe was quite enthusiastic in September 2015 before the UN General Assembly in Japan society. Seminars were uh, uh, conducted for UHC as a theme for the Sustainable Development Agenda. HSS, especially UHC, were in, uh, stressed and international community. There was this convergence of opinions among the international community on this. In the SDGs, UHC was incorporated and then including financial risk protection, access to quality essential health care services, and access to safe, effective quality and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. Those are the uh, definition of the universal health coverage, and these wordings were inc uh, included in the SDG. Goal three. Next, please. In 2015, there was this UNHGA, and SDGs were adopted. And then after that, the first G7 summit was in Japan. Japan was the host, G7 Ise Shima summit. From 2014 to 15, in uh, West Africa, there's Ebola hemorrhagic uh, fever outbreak. And then based on that fact, Ise Shima framework uh, with three pillars were uh, advocated for Japan. First one, based on the lessons learned from the Ebola, global health architecture for the public health crisis should be strengthened. That was the first key message. And as a result of the Ebola, not only Ebola, but uh, uh, avoidable or death, such as uh, death by malaria, which uh, outstripped Ebola's death, was uh, discussed. Resilient health system is so important. That was the shared understanding. Resilient health system is the process to attain UHC in the crisis management, prevention, so preparedness is a part of the process to promote UHC. And then for the, in, including the strengthening of AMR, these are the three major pillars for the crisis management. Crisis management and UHCs, and and then its interrelationship uh, was uh, clarified. And then based on that, this uh, interrelations, uh, interdependence between these two, with the goal of universal health coverage, what will be the first thing to be done? The fir what's the first priority, Japan thought? And UHC financing, that uh, got the focal point. And then, within the United Nations in December, UHC Day was established, and in 2019, 
high-level panel of UHC uh, was to be uh, conducted at the United Nations. So in 2017, Japan led the way for UHC forum and uh, centering around health uh, finance. Uh, Japan uh, played a vital role in priority setting. And then uh, the Director General Guterres of WHO, after he assumed the uh, office, he came to Japan to attend this forum because he recognized the importance of UHC. As you can see from on this photo, Guterres, Director General of WHO and President of World Bank and uh, UNICEF uh, uh, Director General, Gavi Alliance uh, uh, President, all those dignitaries came over to attend this UHC forum to discuss this important uh, issue. In setting this stage, the characteristics of Japan's health diplomacy is that the Prime Minister or Finance Minister Uh, announced a paper in Lancet Journal and before this forum and uh, Japan's uh, financial commitment for uh, the health uh, finance was made clear to show Japan's willingness and then because of these publications before the UHC forum it just uh, uh, helped uh, 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 success of this forum itself. And then the Ministry of Finance was quite enthusiastic. World Bank, IMF, they cooperated with them in 2018. Uh, there's this spring meeting of the World Bank Group as an official event. WHO and uh, J Japanese government and uh, IMF uh, uh, held a UHC finance ministers meeting. The ministers of the finance of different the countries showed interest and to be sure uh, Japan succeeded in establishing UHC finance as a high priority uh, with the focus on the internal uh, financial resources without relying too much on the external financial resources to establish the sustainable uh, health finance next please now, G20 Osaka summit was held in 2019 in Osaka. Next uh, slide, please. In Japan, uh, stressed the importance of building the sustainable financial scheme for the health uh, finance. And then, for the first time in the history of G20 as a host, there's this joint session of health minister and finance minister, which was launched for the first time. For example, uh, the designing of the health uh, financing uh, with the main uh, internal resources, and then basic principle for finance was shared among the participants. And that's how Japan played its role. And the UN high-level meeting of U on UHC was held at the United Nations General Assembly, and Japanese roles and contribution were recognized. And Abe, Prime Minister Abe, uh, was recognized as a champion of health diplomacy and UHC. At, uh, back then, I was appointed the goodwill ambassador for uh, UHC at WHO. So at this uh, high-level meeting seminar in the morning, Mr. Kato, the Minister of Health, discussed the importance of UHC from the viewpoint of Japan and the, as a multi-sector diplomacy promotion session. In that session, I talked about the investment into health and the, uh, I talked about the importance of collaboration for the acceleration of UHC. And finally, in the concluding remark, Prime Minister Abe, based on Japan's experience, for the correction of the uh, 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 disparity in the society, economic disparity, he stressed the importance of uh, UHC. This is how I looked at that uh, meeting. And Prime Minister Abe, 
Smith's concluding remark drew much attention in that forum. And he was so busy, he came only for this concluding remark. But what impressed me was that in the session, there was certain uh, 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 noises. But when Prime Minister Abe came in, the silence was kept. And then when he spoke, everyone was so silent and uh, listened intently to what he had to say. Next, please. Now, why can Japan proceed such system? Because the regime was established quite uh, well. In Japan, there's the Steering Committee of Global Health and uh, Human uh, Security. It's uh, uh, based on PPP. In 2008, at Toyoko Summit, that was the starting point. In setting the agenda, the uh, Public Private Sector Cooperation Task Force was established at that time, and then that platform is still uh, serving its purpose, uh, promoting collaboration among different ministries and the private sector. And uh, then Asia Pharmaceutical and Medical Equipment the Regulation Coordination Promotion Task Force or Special Committee for the ODAs in the health sector was established. Next, please. This is the uh, pub public-private uh, uh, partnership. For example, at the LDP, uh, the Policy Research uh, uh, Council, uh, there's a special committee for global health it helped as well. Within LDP as a policy, there should be a formal adoption as a policy and the task force adopts certain things and then that uh, will be adopted at this uh, uh, policy council's international uh, global health uh, strategy special committee as a basic policy by LDP. That's the characteristics of the entire scheme. About four times a year, the meetings are being held, and the platform is the Forum for Exchange of Views, and then the task force for the specific issues is working. There should be, you may think that there should be a good sponsor for this, but uh, the main financial resource is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I wish the more can come from Japanese government, but this is how it is in the real world. Finally, under the pandemic, there's this diplomatic uh, space of the middle part countries emerging. Under Trump administration, G7 was divided, and for the reform of WHO, as you can see on the next slide, the U.S. Uh, recommendations and the European uh, opinions were divided into two camps. On uh, European side, uh, France, Germany, and UK. And then in the global health, there are three approaches coming up. First one is the governance approach. How can we strengthen the international community governance to respond to the pandemic? That's the first one. And the second, in addition to the governance approach, interdisciplinary approach emerged, combining uh, new uh, policies. There's an independent panel, uh, which was established as a result of the WHO reform. And within WHO, GPMB was established for monitoring uh, uh, the uh, crisis. Uh, and IOAC, the Independent uh, Oversight and Advisory Committee, was established as well. And they are at the final stage of coming up with the uh, uh, recommendations in May. 
uh, there will be a general assembly of uh, WHO and their recommendations will be presented in the governance. The international organizations and civil society players are collaborating for governance approach and the countries, nation states uh, 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 joining ACT Accelerator was established, uh, 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 diagnostic, therapeutics, vaccines, health systems, those are the four major pillars which came out as a result. And especially vaccine is uh, the focal point of the international community's uh, interest. In the past, the governance was targeting uh, the developing countries, but uh, now it's regarded as being needed in the advanced countries as well. So it has become global, and the new governance system to respond to that is required. CEPI and Gavi cooperated as a new governance. COVAX facility was established. Through these processes, US, China, not those superpowers, but the small to medium-sized countries played a central role in establishing new governance structure like this. And Japan uh, was uh, involved from the start of the COVAX facilities establishment. Against this backdrop, the middle power countries played a vital role. So in the uh, global health, uh, global uh, diplomacy, there's this diplomatic space uh, uh, in which the middle uh, powers uh, play a vital role emerged. Another is the uh, lawyer's approach or legal approach uh, centering around EU like Germany and France. Legal uh, provisions are being called for just like the uh, tobacco framework uh, convention, a new uh, international convention to respond to the pandemic was being advocated. These legal approach will play a more important role. Uh, I think that the uh, probability is quite high. Uh, finally, the interdisciplinary approach, the pandemic, because of its lingering effect, uh, it's not uh, 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 only the prevention of the uh, infection while we keep the normal lives like uh, uh, social activities like sports, uh, we should prevent the uh, uh, infections. This uh, uh, pandemic uh, economics, uh, the cooperation of the natural science and social science is needed. It's a new uh, partnership among the different dis disciplines of uh, uh, studies are needed in November last year. The Council on the Economics of Health for All was established at WHO. This is what I wanted to report to you. In May this year, next month, in Italy will be a host for G20 meeting. Uh, EU and Japan will co-host the Global Health Forum. EU countries utilizing G20 fora quite proactively try to play a role in making rules. So there's this uh, good big movement. Unfortunately, under this situation, Japan is having much difficulty inside. So as a health uh, diplomacy, uh, Japan uh, cannot uh, do much in making recommendations in health diplomacy, but UHC, from the viewpoint of UHC, in combination with the crisis management, Japan's uh, health diplomacy should be reconstructed and rebuilt and reinforced. And not only health security, but because of the longer period, economy and social and sports have to uh, proceed uh, at the same time. So interdisciplinary approach in a wide sense of the word is needed as a result. Health security, wider policy concept going beyond health security is needed. 
the idea of human security should uh, be rebuilt at UNDP and uh, MOFA uh, considering this in the health sector. Health sector plays a central role without doubt. So in today's seminar, I do hope that this uh, health diplomacy and the role of the United Nations, how can we utilize the United Nations to, for the uh, course? That's what I want to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Takemi. The health diplomacy, the universal health coverage, its global development, as well as the search for new form of governance in the age of COVID pandemic, among others, were discussed by Mr. Takemi. And following his keynote presentation, I'd like to hear from the government of Japan, the Japanese, uh, the, the who is working in the UN organization, as well as the business sector, to give us the opening remarks. So first, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I should like to invite Ambassador for Public Diplomacy, Mr. Minami Hiroshi, who is also serving as the Deputy Director General of Office of Healthcare Policy of Cabinet Secretariat. Minami speaking, thank you very much for the invitation. The point that I'd like to make first is about uh, the health diplomacy. In fact, Mr. Takemi has already mentioned about uh, the health uh, diplomacy by discussing uh, the human security, which he, uh, he was among uh, those that advocated the concept of uh, human security. And therefore, instead, I'd like to discuss uh, the, the Japan's position in promoting you Great sea. Since 2012 to 2015, I was involved in negotiation of SDGs, and back then, to include UHC as a part of SDGs, we have been working hard. As a result, uh, that culminated into a target 3.8. However, in the process of negotiation, back in 2014, uh, the vertically uh, a separated approach uh, that is uh, the approach by different uh, disease uh, uh, was more emphasized and therefore UHC was uh, less emphasized. It was uh, France and others uh, besides Japan uh, that uh, supported uh, UHC and that is why it was finally included as 3.8 of SDGs. And together with United Nations, we have been promoting uh, the as the UHC, specifically Prime Minister Abe delivered the message at UN General Assembly and also contributed article to Lancet, uh, which is a medical journal, to raise awareness. And also in 2017, with the participation of the Secretary General, uh, Mr. Gutierrez, as Mr. Takemi mentioned, Japan hosted UHC Forum 2017, which gathered the high-ranking government officials from more than 30 countries and international organizations together with experts to discuss uh, how to go about promotion of UHC. In September 2019, there was the uh, UN General Assembly UHC high-level meeting where political declaration was adopted. Uh, there, Japan took an initiative in establishing international cooperation framework, which is UHC, UHC 2030, no, so Japan was uh, the the leading country in organizing 70 countries as UHC friends group. And talking about this uh, friends group, it was quite effective in that at UHC high level meeting in the preparation, Japan was not uh, the presiding country, and yet Japan was the presiding nation of the friends group, and therefore. In preparation of the political declaration, Japan made a significant contribution to a pride and to promote and achieve UHC at those meetings. Uh, the different countries showed a strong uh, commitment and promised to organize another uh, high-level meeting in 2030. And, uh, 
the way to go about uh, the UHC, uh, there could be different approaches and the role of United Nations as well. Some say that the United Nations are not functioning effectively. Talking about the civil war in Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, among others, are the areas where United Nations cannot offer effective solutions. That is due to the conflict and confrontation among P5. However, when it comes to economic development, depending on the ways and uh, depending on the approaches and targets, United Nations can function, like in the case of SDGs. It was first proposed by Colombia, who is uh, not the, the large uh, country in size, and yet, eventually, it resonated uh, within the international community and finally adopted at the United Nations. As Mr. Takemi mentioned, I believe uh, the, the global uh, the health diplomacy as where middle power can play an important role. Well, I hesitate to say that Japan is one of the middle powers, but at least it is not uh, the, the major powers. And whether it is UHC or the health and, sh health and the development, we should call upon like-minded countries uh, trying to mainstreaming uh, the uh, those important topics. Uh, we are seeing the, uh, the continuous uh, spread of uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, which the, the suppresses uh, various activities. And uh, at the same time, we realize the importance of UHC. Last year in September at General Assembly of United Nations, uh, the United Nations General Assembly general debate, the Prime Minister Suga referred to three point three pronged uh, the policies. Uh, first, the cure treatment, uh, the testing, as well as equal access and overcome the current crisis coming from the pandemic. Second, prepare for the future threat coming from the uh, such a pandemic by way of uh, the health and uh, the developed environment to be resistant uh, from health uh, diplomacy point of view. And also Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Minister Motegi uh, co-organized uh, the Friends Group meeting together with Georgia uh, that demonstrates uh, the how active Japan is. At present, we are talking about the post-COVID uh, international health governance at Cabinet Secretariat. We are working on formulation strategies under the initiative of the new team uh, to work against uh, such a pandemic, including COVID-19, and I'm one of them, uh, the team members, and uh, hope that we can continue to make a contribution to global health and to cooperation with United Nations, including WHO. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador Minami. From the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, UN Diplomacy and UHC especially, through the Forum of the United Nations, how can universal uh, health coverage uh, was globalized? He talked about that. Uh, next, uh, I will invite the speaker uh, working at the forefront of the UN agency to promote the UHC. Mr. Seita Akihiro, Director of Health Program, UNRWA, UN Relief and Works, uh, Works Agency. Thank you very much for joining us from afar, Mr. Seita. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Thank you very much. Mr. Takemi, long time no see. Thank you very much. The uh, 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 UHC and SDGs under the pandemic, that's the title. The pandemic changed the world. I work at the UN Relief of Works Agency in Palestine Refugees, UN, uh, uh, UNRWA. Vaccination rollout is slow in coming and the social and economic situation is worsening. I'll talk about uh, uh, the, uh, 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 what's happening at the forefront of assistance. UNRWA provides assistance uh, and production to 5.7 million Palestinian refugees in five areas, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Gaza and the West. 
We care, uh, provide education in 700 uh, uh, schools and 141 clinics. We provide primary health care. We also provide social security services. Now, Palestine refugee issue has been in existence since 1948 uh, without solution in sight even now. UNRWA's presence and activities are so important, but uh, it requires a large amount of fund to continue assistance, and we are in chronic fund shortage, and I would like to thank all uh, donors. And then uh, the recent resumption of the U.S. government aid was a big news, but then Palestine refugees and host countries uh, uh, was changed by COVID-19. Next. This shows the number of daily new cases of infections in five areas uh, that we provide assistance in host countries. The UK variant uh, caused uh, a third wave of the pandemic is uh, in those host countries. In Gaza, 1,900 uh, new cases. That means if we compare to Japan, it's 70 times higher uh, in percentage and equivalent to 60,000 people. Cumulative uh, patients in Lebanon is half a million. That's uh, equivalent to 9 million if we uh, adjust uh, for population in case of Japan. UNRWA is fighting with all its power uh, against this pandemic and then co collaborate uh, from the start with the host countries and providing uh, uh, detection and treatment. And for 140 clinics uh, uh, introduced triage and suspicious cases were sent to the government facilities for PCR tests and inpatient care. And we cooperate with the host countries in vaccination, ask the host governments to formulate uh, uh, this uh, plan, and they are inoculating refugees and nationals in the same way. I thank uh, the, uh, the host countries so much. And then uh, those are the Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, Syria governments. However, the healthcare system is extremely overstretched in the host countries. Uh, there is a chronic shortage of beds and PCR kits. And Palestinian refugees are socially vulnerable, so they are hit harder. In Lebanon, the Japanese government that us are assisting uh, in PCR tests and inpatient care, but still, the health care system is operating at near full capacity. And the delay of the vaccination is very serious. Uh, and the host countries, as uh, Mr. Takemi said, that the, through COVAX, they procured doses or through their own initiative in Jordan, uh, the first to start that rollout on, in January. But the coverage of the vaccination of Lebanon, Jordan is 5.5%, Lebanon 4.0%, Palestine 2.8%. The global inequality in vaccine distribution is hampering the vaccination. The egregious uh, pandemic is uh, having a huge impact on uh, the social and economic uh, fabric. Um, Palestine refugees have always been socially vulnerable. Uh, the employment uh, reduced their income. Women and children became target of uh, domestic violence. And one uh, refugee said, either pandemic or poverty will kill me. I have to flee somewhere and we are providing uh, assistance but the needs far outstrips the supply the pandemic uh, changed the situation of palestine refugees vaccination is uh, being delayed and uh, the healthcare system remains out, uh, overstretched and social and economic situation is deteriorating it is the crisis of not only society uh, but also the SDG as the UHC. There are four recommendations I will make. I would like to make first. UHC should be made truly universal, and the litmus test is vaccination. If vaccination becomes universal, UHC becomes universal. It's so important. Covax is an epoch-making organization uh, formulated by international community. We need to continue Covax assistance. 87% of the vaccine is being used in the middle to high income countries. We need to improve this. But this year's COVAX goal of 20% of inoculation, that's too low. We need to strengthen our assistance to COVAX and probably we need urgent assistance beyond COVAX. Second, the fusion of UHC and SDGs are important. The major health issue of the Palestinian refugees 
is poverty, lack of hygiene, inequality, and the lack of peace. As Mr. Takemi said, those are the SDGs. Without uh, comprehensively solu solving these issues, there should be no UHCs. Uh, and uh, uh, portable toilets like Japanese original contrivance is so important. Now, those are uh, epoch-making technology originating in Japan is so important to promote. UNRWA is promoting digital transformation. One of them is the electronic health record, uh, maternal and child health uh, record book, and diabetes notebooks. And this shows an application on smartphones that the uh, uh, Palestinian refugee women is holding in her hand. This is the uh, passport of life for Palestinian uh, refugees. They evaluate highly, and because of these applications, even if they cannot come to visit the doctors, uh, they can. Uh, 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 we can send the health message to them, and we can confirm the appointments with the doctors. Uh, there are 140 uh, clinics, and uh, we provide care to 90. Thousand uh, expectant mothers and 300,000 diabetic and hypertension patients. There are so many things we should uh, have to uh, cope with. In addition to the smartphone application, we introduce telemedicine and we introduce simple antigen tests as well. And with the uh, vaccination, coronavirus will not uh, go away. Uh, primary care is at the heart of the UHC. Uh, Japanese technological assistance is uh, being called for. UHC is inclusive of all. SDGs leaves no one behind. These values are universal, and the importance is getting more uh, pronounced. Finally, I would like to talk about, uh, I would like to show the Gaza children. Uh, they fly kites, uh, showing their appreciation to uh, the uh, Japanese uh, assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Seita. I understand how hard you're working, especially with the COVID pandemic. You shared with us the significance of UHC uh, from local point of view. Now, I should like to invite uh, the representative from business sector to share with us uh, their views we have with us. Mr. Joji Nakayama, uh, who is the advisor to uh, Daiichi Sankyo, and he's also the chairman of the committee on responsible business uh, conduct and SDGs promotion. Can, I, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. On behalf of the business sector, I'd like to discuss various initiatives uh, taken by the business sector in Japan and also refer to the role uh, played by the government of Japan as well as the United Nations. May I have the next slide? If you refer to the website of uh, Keidan Ren, uh, you can see the various business activities that we engaged in in this context. Not only health sector, but also IT, chemistry, and construction sectors are working uh, from uh, their point of view for a creation of uh, the uh, safe and secure society uh, as well as uh, health and the better society. At uh, first, I'd like to refer to the example of the Sumitomo chemical. They developed uh, the only said that the mosquito net infused uh, with uh, the pesticide and this will expel uh, the malaria carrying mosquitoes and uh, the its uh, effectiveness uh, would uh, last uh, more than five years even after washing now thanks to technology transfer it is produced locally thereby producing the spin-off effect on economy including uh, the employment creation but of course, Ali said, found it rather difficult to spread uh, within Africa. Uh, the developers of Sumitomo Chemical negotiated with United Nations and WHO, and then with the support and certification by WHO, uh, finally, uh, the local production started. 
for businesses to be engaged in research and development and produce a useful product that would make a major contribution, at least the first step for SDGs achievement and UHCs. But then comes the important step that is delivery. In the case of developing countries, logistics networks are underdeveloped and therefore for a single company and to be in charge of delivery is not an easy task at all. And therefore, as in the case of Alisat, we need uh, the involvement of the public uh, the organizations, including United Nations. Now, uh, in the case of developing economies uh, for excretion, uh, the outdoor pit toilet is used and therefore that results in the major health threat, including stench and infectious diseases. Therefore, Lixol came up with the portable toilet to reduce the impact resulting in infectious diseases. And the, this could be installed easily by local people, and uh, therefore it contributed to increasing employment, not only in Africa, but also in India and Southeast Asia. More than 3.8 million units have been already shipped in 38 countries. But in spreading this technology, the hygiene awareness and uh, the social practice or custom are stumbling blocks, and therefore uh, they are working together with UNICEF and JICA to uh, be engaged in hygiene education. Here again, the company alone cannot resolve this, uh, the problem that also requires collaboration with international organizations. Uh, here is another example. As I am uh, from the pharmaceutical company, this is uh, my pet subject. Professor Satoshi Omura of Kitazato University developed ivermectin, uh, which is effective in treating onchocerciasis, and uh, WHO started its operation to eradicate onchocerciasis uh, in west coast of Africa in 1974. And uh, in 1988, this drug was introduced in Africa. As a result, over 14 years, 40 million people didn't contract with this infectious diseases and 600,000 people could uh, maintain their vision. This resulted in uh, the improved health of the people. And uh, therefore, the people, the local people didn't have to abandon the farmland resulting in production of food worth of 17 million people annually. One new drug cured the disease, improved the labor productivity, improved the poverty and starvation, and further promoted the economic growth. And here again, the WHO and other UN organizations were instrumental in delivery of the product that was first developed by private sector. Pharmaceutical industry is engaged in the development of uh, the new uh, drugs. And uh, as one of uh, such initiatives, uh, there is Global Health Innovative Technology Fund, or GHIT Fund, uh, to eradicate infectious diseases in developing countries. It is a global nonprofit organization involving pharmaceutical companies, medical equipment companies, government of Japan, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Welcome, and UNDP. This is the international public-private partnership originating from Japan. Diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis, neglected tropical diseases in developing countries are uh, subject to the development of uh, medical treatment, vaccine, and development of diagnostic diagnostics and investment is made in those initiatives. Not only that, uh, with advice from the foundation that has an experience in developing countries, it is uh, promoting uh, the, uh, the various initiatives with the uh, funding of uh, 21 billion yen in being engaged in 90 projects, and some of them are now close to commercialization. But uh, the GHIT fund aims at research and development of uh, treatment uh, drugs for 
infectious diseases in developing countries and therefore when it comes to delivery that requires other international united nations functions and right now they are working together with UNGP. lastly i'd like to share with you our experience at date sankyo through partnership with jica we transfer technology of vaccine production in vietnam now a vaccine cooperation in vietnam is producing uh, the vaccines and the regular inoculation started for children in 2018 now 50 50,000 people received inoculation in one year and contributed to prevention of measles and rubella and also vietnam became the first uh, country uh, engaged in production of vaccine in Southeast Asia, and it is expected to become a hub. And I'd like to conclude by emphasizing the importance of delivery. This is something that is uh, hard for businesses, enterprises uh, to uh, achieve alone, and therefore uh, we are looking forward to partnership with international organizations uh, to come up with a solution. Thank you very much, Mr. Nakayama. You talked about an initiative uh, taken up by the business community uh, of Japan and how the partnership with the international uh, uh, organizations, including UN, helps. Uh, thank you very much for your information. Now, I would like to call upon the commentators to make comments, and then uh, the panelists will join for discussions to follow. There are three commentators. First, uh, who the the person who gave us the keynote speech, uh, Mr. Takemi, followed by two more. Mr. Takemi, please. Health diplomacy in order to realize UHC and to promote uh, the uh, 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 health diplomacy, I have listened to a very important uh, uh, vo voice from the forefront, Anrua in offering a primary health care in a sustainable manner. You focused your efforts on sustainable provision. And to that end, what kind of global assistance is needed? And those are the things you mentioned. And then in vaccination, you said that the coverage is still low. Japan is an one of the advanced countries, but the coverage of the vaccination in Japan is lower than in Jordan. I have come to know that. Now, developing countries, advanced countries, both need the, the va vaccine. So important. This is the emergence of this vaccine needed by both in the international community. This is the international goods of asset. That's a public capitals. From that uh, perspective, and uh, uh, you talked about GHIT earlier, in the market mechanism, that should be a, a way to assist the uh, development and uh, distribute equally the vaccine outside the conventional framework. I think uh, I have learned that these are the international challenges we face. And the pharmaceutical company is represented by Mr. Nakayama here. The role played by the farmers is so important. Market mechanism. There should be a space outside the market mechanism that the farmers can develop the global public capital because farmers play such an important role because market mechanism cannot cope with this. Now, who will make judgment? In what way the government and the private sector collaborate for advancing development of the vaccines? We need to improve our discussions the collaboration of the government, academia, and the business should uh, uh, be promoted for making the new system. That's how I interpret 
the situation from your presentations. You raised many more issues, but at this point in time, I conclude my comments. Thank you, Mr. Takemi. Based on the understanding of this pandemic now, how can we create and formulate the global mechanism? You uh, raised important issues there, too commentators from JICA, Ms. Kayashima, Senior Vice President. At the forefront of the assistance that the Japan is providing, uh, she can share her view. Ms. Kayashima, please. Thank you very much. My name is Kayashima. Thank you very much for wonderful, informative discussions. I feel rather presumptuous to make any comments to such distinguished uh, presentations, but allow me to share some examples of JICA and uh, then leave with my personal impressions. Global health coverage is being led by the Japanese government from MOFA. Uh, there's this explanation in JICA is an implementation of the bilateral economic cooperation and the universal health coverage is one of the major pillars. All people can access to the uh, uh, appropriate health care without uh, financial hardship from the human security. That's so important. That's how JICA believes. So to realize UAC, new uh, quality health service should be provided. This is something that JICA has been implementing. In addition, universal health coverage under that idea, protection from the uh, economic crisis and e equity, uh, equitability is so important as well. In 2020, from the start of 2020 last year, COVID-19 has spread throughout the world. This is uh, unprecedented, both developing countries and advanced countries. That uh, pandemic rocked from the bottom the uh, uh, health system of both uh, uh, groups. Many people were made to realize how, uh, how health is important. JICA has been cooperating in the health sector in the developing countries. You ate in the initiative to contribute to the UHC can be effective for response as a response to COVID-19 in Vietnam. We uh, cooperated in providing uh, treatment in Ghana and Kenya. Japan's cooperation was instrumental in establishing research centers. And these research centers took care of more than 50% of the PCR tests. So they contributed to the local communities. And JICA uh, has been giving this assistance to these uh, centers, local centers under UHC. And this uh, endeavor made the results from fall last year in order to respond to the pandemic in the uh, pandemic, uh, we started JICA Global Health uh, Initiative, leaving no one behind. Our goal is the attainment of UHC. And then three major pillars are treatment and vigilance and prevention. And we are reviewing and strengthening these major pillars. First major pillar is the diagnosis of the infectious disease under the pandemic. We need to save lives of people, and we need to improve the hospitals and then develop the healthcare welfare uh, workforce. And then intensive care has to be strengthened as well to prevent the severe cases. The second is the research and early warning of infectious disease. Japan helped uh, uh, the developing countries for uh, the research of the infectious diseases and prevention of those diseases. We need to strengthen this, and we try to build the network 
of the testing and research facilities of infectious disease, just like Ghana. The third is the strengthening of the prevention of infectious diseases and mainstreaming of the health crisis response. Vaccination, well, Japanese government is helping the developing countries to to promote vaccinations in the developing countries, and JICA is willing to help in, in the mid to long term basis, not only in the health sector, in terms of water, sanitation, urban planning, education, nutrition. In those areas, the services are important as well, and JICA is embarking on this. Mr. Takemi and three panelists gave us the presentations. So I was asked to make the comments there too. One, under the pandemic, UHC is so important, not only in the health sector, but also for the livelihood of people and the socioeconomic development. Now, together with the developing countries, advanced countries were impacted by the pandemic. So UHC is the challenge of SDGs which should be tackled by both developing countries and advanced countries. UHC is a common challenge for both groups, and the pandemic knows no boundaries. So collaboration is needed, but at the same time, there's this me, my country first attitude. There's this division among countries, and uh, there's this uh, division uh, which led to displacement of people is proceeding as well, and uh, fair and equitable distribution of vaccine is so important. Uh, collaboration of the United Nations, international organizations, and Japan and other countries so important. Also, at the same time, as uh, Mr. Nakayama proposed, collaboration between governments and private sector is important. And UNRWA's uh, presentation said that the collaboration at the local level is important. UHC is an international movement at a high level, very high level. Many people are le leading this as an international initiative. The private sectors and public sectors and uh, different countries have to collaborate to support UHC. That's so important. Second comment, mainstreaming of health, the importance of mainstreaming. Uh, resilient health systems has to be established. That's the health sector. but. Uh, water supplies, uh, health education, hand washing, which involves uh, the behavioral change. Those are the activities which go beyond the traditional uh, health sector, as Mr. Takemi said towards the end. In order to regain the healthy and safe livelihood, uh, mainstreaming of the health crisis response is important, and UHC has to be reinterpreted as a wider concept. This concludes my remark. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kawashima. Now, I should like to invite Ambassador of Ghana to Japan, uh, His Excellency Frank Ochale, to give us his comments. The floor is yours. Uh, we would like to ask uh, His Excellency Mr. Frank Ochale to uh, make his, his comments. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, from the Embassy of the Republic of Ghana. First of all, I'd like to thank the Japan Institute of International Affairs, the United Nations Information Center, Tokyo, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan for organizing this webinar on the importance of uh, universal health coverage and the opportunity given to me to make uh, comments, a few comments. Ghana government appreciates the government of Japan's pledge towards the UHC, 
which has now become an agenda item for the entire international community, is highly commendable. I wish to congratulate Japan on the 60th anniversary of Japan's universal health insurance system. And I would like to thank the government of Japan for leading the initiative to incorporate UAC into sustainable development goals. Ghana committed its herself to the Health for All movement and adopted the primary health care strategy in the late 1970s and introduced district health system in the 90s. In 2003, the National Health Insurance Scheme, which is referred to in Ghana as NHIS, was introduced to provide equitable access and financial coverage for basic health care service in, to all Ghanaian citizens. The community-based health planning and service uh, have, have been set up to deliver essential community-based health services. I believe every participant here is aware of the close relations between Ghana has with Japan through Dr. Hideo Noguchi, the renowned Japanese research scientist. And this connection has happily led to the exchange of information, technology, expertise, and knowledge transfer. The Noguchi Medical Research Institute at the University of Ghana, which has been named after Dr. Hideo Noguchi, is now regarded as one of the centers of excellence in medical research on the African continent. With the support of JICA, the Noguchi Institute has played a significant role in Ghana's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, handling almost 80% of the testing in the country, as well as seven other countries in the sub-region. We are grateful to the government and the people of Japan for their continued support in these areas of promoting UHC. May I also commend companies such as Terrarimo, Sismis, Ajinamoto that are working with the government of Ghana towards promotion of UHC in Ghana. In its commitment to deliver UHC, the government of Ghana has engaged activities with relevant stakeholders. In this regard, Ghana, Japan, and UNSF enter into strategic partnership that will benefit about 740,000 mothers and children in 80 districts in Ghana under the improving nurturing care through the use of maternal and child health record books. Ghana is also working with Ajina Motor Company to improve the nutritional levels of the children through the Cocoa Plus supplement. Furthermore, the government of Japan launched the African Health and Wellbeing Initiative at TICAD 7 in 2019. Ghana was selected as one of the prioritized countries for this remarkable endeavor. And we are grateful for this substantial sustainable, sustained partnership. As I conclude, it's my hope that Japan and the developed world will continue to cooperate to support struggling economies and media UHC targets set under the SDGs. I thank you for your attention and the opportunity to this small comment. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador. We have listened to the comments by the ambassador of the Republic of Ghana, stressing UHC is contributing to the improvement of health in Ghana. Not only the Japanese government, but the Japanese business companies and UNICEF, international UN organizations are helping as well in collaboration with one another. It was a very important comment. We have only limited amount of time left. The three, among the three panelists, we have listened to Mr. Takemi and listened to Ms. Kayashima and Ambassador Uchere. In response to the comments to those, or 
Maybe you want to make comments to other panelists. If any one of the panelists want to make additional comments at this point in time, please raise your hand. Mr. Nakayama. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? As Mr. Takemi uh, talked about the role of the farmers, uh, outside uh, the conventional framework of uh, market mechanism, and the pharma industry is having difficulties at this moment in the in infectious disease, especially public uh, sector and private sector and the academia have to collaborate and then for the government to have a certain policy is so important. In case of infection or disease, there's this sudden outbreak or sometimes it just ends quickly. In, uh, in uh, uh, case of the COVID-19, it's been there for a long time. And, and then we need the business corporations come up with the solutions and to spread it. If all uh, uh, the uh, pandemic uh, ends quickly, uh, that may not give enough return on investment. So if the uh, notion of the uh, pure economic uh, returns, it will be difficult for uh, business uh, companies to do this. So the uh, trilateral collaboration is so important. In case of the COVID-19, the conventional uh, uh, infectious disease, uh, we used uh, chicken eggs uh, for incubation, well, this is based upon nucleic acid, and uh, the development started since uh, ten years ago uh, on different uh, diseases, and it could be now converted to as such a uh, the new pandemic, and therefore, I believe uh, we have a great uh, the, the range of options, so to speak, uh, to cope with those pandemics, including those that come up in the future. And also, uh, the, the, all those, uh, uh, the, the, the bacteria that are resistant against uh, the antibiotics, how to cope with that, that is a major threat uh, for develop, developed economies as well. And uh, uh, the business principle for the, uh, the private sector alone cannot solve that. We need uh, the partnership with the public sector. And uh, when the pandemic spreads beyond the uh, national border, we need global collaboration all around the world, uh, they're working together with other pharmaceutical companies in the world as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Nakayama. Mr. Seita, Ambassador Minami, uh, raising their hand. Because time is limited, please be concise. Uh, therefore, I'd like to hear from uh, those that are engaged in field work and also uh, the, uh, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So first, Mr. Seita, can you hear me? Thank you very much, Mr. Chakemi. Well, actually, we received the question. I think, uh, Mr. Ken, I think you are totally right. And then, and then uh, for us working in the front line, that the COVID is everything. It's not only define the shape of the health services, but uh, define the social and economic life of everyone, particularly those vulnerable. And that's important that we always put the COVID response in the center of our, uh, our approach. And then that the sustainable COVID response is probably the most important thing for the time being. And then of course, vaccine will come, but we don't know how effective vaccine is for the next year. And so that I think it's, we formulate our response to that, uh, how to avoid the COVID uh, uh, impact further. And uh, uh, two more things, apology, but the one is that we have to remember that before COVID, our world was not so fantastic place. We have a lot of trouble. So even that, even if we address COVID, that the pre-COVID era is not the somehow peaceful place, particularly in the Middle East. And last not but least, today is the day first of the Ramadan. And so that for those who are Muslims or who have friends of Muslims, please extend the Ramadan Karim and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Seita. Now I'd like to turn to Ambassador Minami. Thank you very much. Mr. Nakayama and Mr. Takemi mentioned the trilateral collaboration or partnership government and the businesses and academia, I fully agree. Internationally, there's this global fund and CEPI uh, Gavi uh, alliance exist, totally different from conventional international organization. 
new type of partnership is emerging. And then the, in Japan, we need to respond to this emergence, and the new type of partnership within Japan should be established, in my view. Second point, among the SDGs, through the negotiation process, silo approach should be uh, ended. Uh, the UHC discussion is wide-ranging. It's not restricted to health sector, economy, in society, in culture, all involved. So in that sense, silo approach or octopus pot approach should not be adopted. There are 17 goals in, under SDG. The consistency see with other goals or impact to other goals have to be considered in promoting UHC and global health. Thank you. Thank you very much. We received questions from the floor, but I have to apologize. The time is quite limited. So the questions from the viewers cannot be answered at this point in time on an individual basis for Japanese UHC. How the Japanese uh, national health insurance system contribute to UHC? How can we measure this for the attainment, including these uh, problems, uh, the UHC's establishment and its uh, future uh, 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 way and the role of UN as a, a discussion forum or uh, the uh, place for assistance and Japanese uh, assisting agencies and uh, private sector companies in the host countries or the recipients. And then the uh, developing countries, just like Ghana, who is working so hard. But with all these uh, stakeholders, we need to collaborate more. That's what uh, you must have felt uh, from the discussion today. I'm very sorry at this point in time that we cannot uh, answer the questions from the floor. Under the pandemic, we are affected by the pandemic to hold this kind of webinar, but we are honored by the presence by the specialists. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Takemi, to stay with us until the end and for your contribution. Uh, this has proved to be a very useful uh, webinar. JIIIA co-hosted uh, this webinar with the uh, Information Center of the United Nations and the MOFA with the uh, uh, support of the JBF. Among the viewers, I do hope to see a network, Japanese government, private sector companies, United Nations, and the recipients of the assistance, and the developing countries, people who are working so hard. And I hope this World Forum will give them an opportunity to work closer together so that the international cooperation will be strengthened so that we can have a better view for the post-corona world. With this, I would like to conclude this webinar. Mr. Takemi, thank you very much for participating. I would like to thank all the panelists and commentators and viewers as well. Thank you.